after the latest development version dropped for Infinite Rams, guess what was staring me down from the roadmap? Only one lone task. Revamping that token system. Users and, oh yeah, me too, have been itching for an upgrade. One where our beloved tokens not only look good, but feel right. And heck, why not toss in some personal flair while we're at it? I mean, with a rock-solid foundation I'd built before. It should be a walk in the park, right? Boy, was I wrong. What I hadn't counted on was the inner child in me. You know, the one with those sparkling eyes that can't help but chase after every shiny new idea and randomly toss it into the mix. That kicked off a 4-5 week sprint that was nothing short of intense. Most of you know, Infinite Realms isn't my day gig. On the side, I've been rolling out a project with a colleague for close to 9 months. And if the universe loves drama, August 11th was hanging over me. That's when Nina and I hit the seas on our sailing adventure. Come hello high water, ready or not. Setting sail with not ready? Not an option, so full sails ahead. Luckily, there were two D&D sessions on our Rime of the Frostmaiden campaign during the development time, where I could test the new features as Dungeon Master. In the first session, my players defeated the Shadulin Dragon and eventually arrived at Zadorok's Mountain Fortress. A dungeon crawl was on the agenda for the second session. In the thick of it all, I'd made some serious strides with a new token system. Now you could jazz up your game with imported images for character portraits and even bring in those digital Hero Forge minis. I streamlined the Move and Token tool into a sleek combo, allowing multiple token shifts with a simple Control key tap. Plus, for those who like to keep things consistent, there's now an option to save and reuse those perfect tokens as global templates. When I started adding optional lighting to the tokens, I had my first fatal idea. I noticed the striking way the light rays converged against the virtual walls on my UVTT test map, the feature that I had built in the last version. Why not do the same for the Fog of War brush? The prototype was quickly made, but terribly inefficient. The first working attempt resulted in an in-game performance of a whooping 1 to 3 frames per second on an M1 Pro MacBook. Three days of optimizing and bug hunting later, the system was finally ready to go live. The performance loss is so minimal on modern systems that it's negligible. Great! Now I had a beautiful dynamic fog of war brush for tokens on UVTT maps, which is, of course, completely optional and tied to the token's light radius. The problem? My maps for the Sunday session were only vanilla PNG files without any information on virtual walls. So I decided to quickly write a new tool to place virtual walls on legacy maps. Done and dusted. After much swearing and quite some success, I had a functioning prototype. Creating an intuitive and functional user interface took the longest. But that was also done by Saturday afternoon. Next up, draping my trio of maps with walls. Nah, that's when I noticed another deficiency that hurt my perfectionist soul. Compared to a UVTT map with its beautiful dynamic lighting, my legacy maps looked quite dull. The only lights were in the player's tokens, and I struggled to imagine properly representing the dark fortress with its omnipresent coal braziers if they didn't even glow. So I made my second fatal decision. I'll quickly build a tool to place configurable point lights on my legacy maps for tomorrow. Das ist fatal. <laughs> Quick and dirty doesn't even begin to cover it. I focused on the bare sand shots, somewhat neglecting documentation and testing. Late on Saturday, I had the light tool ready to a reasonable extent. I ran the compiler before going to bed at 1.30 am. That way, I could start finishing my maps with walls and lights the next morning in Infinite Realms. Well, that almost worked. There were various compiler errors and nothing worked on Saturday morning. A few quick bug fixes later, I finally had a working version. It was almost finished when the doorbell rang and the first players arrived. 
Like any good dungeon master, I use the healthy mix of improvisation and multitasking to get everything ready so the dungeon crawl could begin. And it was pretty epic. Some bugs did pop up, Raycast went haywire if a token was pulled through a virtual wall, unveiling all the fog of war in vicinity, the spawn points of my tokens were completely random, resulting in some searches, and I had messed up the aura system. Aside from these minor hiccups, it was an amazing D&D session. My players had a blast, especially when they realized some of the Dwarga would fight alongside them. I simply colored those ally tokens green. The new light tool, in conjunction with virtual walls, added much to the atmosphere, and the dynamic token brush made revealing Fog of War a breeze. Since then, I've addressed all the issues that came up on Sunday. The release is not nearly as frightening as the initial version. Also, I added a few more things. The handout tool now has moved with the tokens into a new tab that responds to the H hotkey. Tools also have hotkeys, 1 to 7, for those that are usable at a time. Here you can learn how to build your own 3D maps for infinite realms. That's it for the 2023.0.3 version. Take care and see you in the realms.